G'day, Rich from Bush Law Survival. Coming at you from the Bush Law Survival School. Out here in the middle of pristine, very dry, drought-stricken Australian bush. Great stuff, isn't it? That's just normal out here. The seasons and the variability of them are one of those fantastic attributes of the Australian bush. Heavily characterised by dead dry grass, dead dry trees, and everything else. Listen, all that aside, what I want to talk to you about today is um, a few weeks ago we were on the project on Network 10 and we had to set up a bit of a demo shelter that I have usually one of them up in the, at the school all times anyway. And it's before it gets too old and ratty and I start to sort of knock it down, I just wanted to explain the concept of what this particular shelter is all about because that helps people get this frame of what to expect in a survival situation first 24 hours because a lot of people don't seem to have a firm grasp on that from what I, what I observe at the school put it that way because people come here with a, a range of different experience bases and a range of different backgrounds not all of them are total novices some of them are very very experienced bushmen and women and as a consequence I, I have to recalibrate for them some of their realistic expectations because they just don't understand things like calorie balance you know how much what the output is for the gain that they're going to potentially put out so this is one example of that. This is what I call a bootlace shelter. So bootlace is a, you know, obviously a, the, the length of a bootlace being about about a meter. And to be able to put a shelter together, and this is just a term I, I just made up. I could do a lot of things, I just made it up. Okay, it's bootlace shelter. So here's my bootlace. This single bootlace here is holding up that central beam. Yeah? And this is a very simple, short-term shelter. It's built on the A-frame concept, but it's simply a lean-to, yeah? So it's extended out that way, coming across as a simple lean-to with no other cordage or, or materials provided by man involved in its construction. That's really important because that helps us get this idea of total maximization of available resources. And if you use, you know, four meters of cordage, just to build a shelter, that's not smart. You're wasting a lot of resource material. So we've got to conserve resources. So we've only used a bootlace. Now, technically, we can build this whole shelter without any um, cordage whatsoever. And we often do that here at the school. We often don't use a single piece of string to put a shelter up. Right? But if we had to, there's the bootlace concept. One bootlace. This side didn't really need one because we've got a handy fork here, an old coppiced bit of tree. The rest is self-explanatory. Um, bedding on the inside, spare wood to keep it out of the weather, grass and thatching on the underside. Now that's coupled with our fire shield here. Now at a good distance so that I'm not going to get sparks into my shelter but I'm going to not lose too much heat. So that's a bit of a, a trial and error process to get that all happening. Fireplace, lots of earth up against the wall. Otherwise that thing's going to candle at about 2 o'clock in the morning and you're going to have a nice brightly lit shelter for about half an hour. It's an extra warmth and then you're going to be cold again as that wall disappears on you. So, and there's the other parts of the boot lace have been utilised in this case on that post and that post to help tie that wall together. Now I used to do a, sometimes I put a, let's see, tilt so you can see it, sometimes I put a, another post in there and you can use one, two, three, but I've found that they aren't strong enough for more than a couple of days. And there's a lot of work then hammering them into the soil so it's deep enough to hold the structure together. Rocks and stuff are great, but I tend to use rocks on the outside of this. Why? because they'll store radiant heat for me that I can then roll up into my shelter to keep myself warm during the night. So the concept here is it's a winter shelter. I want some insulation, but I also need to be protected from the sun during the day to some extent. And um, as a consequence, fire shield in, at this time of the year, summer, I'm probably not gonna do that. It's just more, more output for, for no reasonable gain. So don't just go ahead and do things because you saw it in a book or on a YouTube video. Make sure you understand why you're doing it. That's really important. If we look at the back of the shelter here, all just grass thatch. The logs that you can see down there are just to help 
anchor the thatch on in case we get some big winds, which we have had at the moment, and it's done a fantastic job. And the heat just helps compress all that on. Again, no cordage and no realistic thatching. Thatching is a bushcraft skill. It's for a permanent shelter. It's for a village shelter. Um, this is something I'm going to put up in about two, three hours to keep me out of the wind and the rain for a couple of days to a week or two. I don't want to spend a lot of calorie output on making it all grass thatched and tied in little bundles and roped off to rafters. That is just excessive waste of time and calories and resources. So this is what I call a debris system. I just cut the grass or whatever is around in that environment, dump it on, lock it on. That's it. Done. Finished. Move on to the next priority in your survival sort of list at that point. Um, inside, comfortable. Comfortable space inside. Like we said, a supply of dry material, both tinder and fuel for the change in weather conditions if they were to occur. Or alternatively, I can put that into a separate location, just a case somewhere. You can see an example of that over here, where we've just started collecting our firewood and putting it up. Putting it up against a tree so it's not going to be waterlogged if we do get some rain. Pretty simple. Pretty simple it is. That is what survival is all about. It is about being intelligent, thinking through the consequences of every decision you make, and then owning those decisions. Big thing. No blame. No blame is useful in the survival situation. You're where you are, get on with it, figure out what's got to be done, and take action. Otherwise, you'll end up worrying yourself into an early grave. So, hope that's of useful um, interest to you. There it is in, in totality. A nice, simple little survivor camp. First 24 hours, perhaps, perhaps the fire shield you into the, into the second day. But first 24 hours, is all you're doing is getting out of the weather, lean to up, and then you shelter up. There you go, guys. Dare to survive. Get out there. Try it out. Have a go. Critically think it through. See what you think. See you later.